Hello everyone, our topic for, the, for this lecture video is about weather services for shipping and we will feature the details about the WMO or the World Meteorological Organization. Also in this video, we will talk about the usage of the, war, the forecasting wherein we will know the track of the storm and how to avoid the storm at sea. World Meteorological Organization or WMO is a specialized agency of the UN or United Nations with 193 member states and territories. It is the UN system authoritative voice on the state and behavior of the Earth's atmosphere, its interaction with the land and oceans, the weather and climate, and produces the resulting distribution of water resources. It is originated from the International Meteorological Organization, IMO, which was founded in 1873 to facilitate the exchange of weather information across national borders. It also established in 1950, WMO became a specialized agency of the UN in 1951. Its mandate is in the areas of meteorology and operational hydrology and related geophysical sciences. Since its establishment, WMO has played a unique and powerful role in contributing to the safety and welfare of humanity. It has fostered collaboration between the National Meteorological and Hydrological Services of its members and furthered the application of meteorology in many areas. So what does WMO do or ano ba yung ginagawa ng WMO? As an specialized agency of UN, dedicated ang WMO sa pagkakaroon ng international cooperation with the coordination of the member states sa pagre-report sa kanya kung ano ba yung weather and climate on that area. Also, with the, co with the cooperation of national meteorological and hydrological services, they work around the clock to study the meteorological status, weather, and climate sa lahat ng area ng kanyang member states para magkaroon ng study, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng weather forecast. So, paano nila ginagawa yun? Nagkakaroon sila ng mga summary and uh, consensus ng mga weather reports na binibigay ng mga member states sa WMO. For example, what we have is pag-asa. So, si pag-asa, nagre-report yan kay WMO bilang member state din siya under the United Nations kung ano ang lagay ng panahon dito sa Pilipinas. For example, bum, ilang bagyo ang bumisita ngayong taon, ngayong buwan, ano yung uh, mga petsa o ano yung mga buwan ng tagtuyot, tagulan. So, nare-report yan ni Pag-asa kay WMO as part of its contribution in the study of meteorology under the United Nations Member States. Also, WMO has some programs to facilitate and promote, just like, for example, the establishment of networks of observational stations to provide weather, climate, and water-related data or hydrological data. Also, they establish and maintain the data management centers and telecommunication systems for the provision on and rapid exchange of weather, climate, and weather-related data. Also, the creation of standards for observation and monitoring in order to ensure adequate uniformity in the practices and procedures employed worldwide and thereby ascertain the homogeneity of data and statistics. So, parang sinasummarize lang talaga ni WMO at syempre, siya yung nagmamandate sa maintenance 
ng, for example, ng satellite, weather satellites, weather stations. And sila din yung nagmamandate ng mga terminologies, for example, ay mga units of measurement in the weather. Weather forecasts are on phones, televisions, and computers. So, we need them to plan our day-to-day -day or simply to know what to, what to wear. So, WMO organize also and mandates also the regular reports on the weather on phones, televisions, computers, etc. And they provide in essential information for planting and harvesting crop, for selecting routes over land, sea, and air, and also for infrastructures, just like building roads and uh, making preparations against impending natural hazards and much more. WMO coordinates the worldwide efforts that are prerequisite for the production and accurate, timely weather forecast. Another aim of WMO is to have a land observing station that is duly maintained at monitor ito ng National Meteorological Center or NMC often referred to as the Central Forecasting Office or CFO. So, one address of this is at Bracknell in the UK. The Meteorological Office, nasa UK siya. It, it is linked with the NMC, usually through a number of subordinate centers. Are the land of serving stations, which collect surface data. The range of meteorological elements and the frequency of weather of observation will vary depending upon the weather the observing station is classified as synoptic, auxiliary, climatological, agrometeorological, or simply a health resort. As you can see in our diagram, that is our sequence or the how the World Meteorological Organization applies or directs or manages the information on the weather. So let's start on the part of the voluntary observing ships because that's what we are. Diyan tayo magfo-focus kasi as we are on board the vessel, syempre tayo yung mag-take part, tayo magka-contribute sa weather services. Ikaw yung nasa dagat, syempre ano yung weather mo sa dagat. So ire-report mo bilang voluntary observing ship ka you will report your weather status o kung anong lagay ng panahon mo sa coastal radio station. Okay? Pwede mo yung i-report through a uh, radio service and then meron naman tayo by Inmarsat Sea or International Maritime Satellite. Inmarsat. I-report naman natin yung ating weather sa JO Stationary satellite. And then lahat 'yan, itong si Coastal Radio Station, magre-relay siya at si Radio Stationary Satellite or si Weather Satellite magre-relay siya kay National Meteorological Center or yung tinatawag nating NMC. Okay, ganun din siya, ire-relay din niya kay Ocean Weather Ships. Ganun din, kumbaga two-way siya. Nagbigay din, par, nagbigay din ng data si Ocean Weather Ships papunta kay National Meteorological Center and then vice versa, ibibigay din niya yung data kay Ocean Weather Ships kasi this Ocean Weather Ships sa yung inatasa ni NMC na mag-observe in that particular sea area. And then, as long as, same as do, dito sa ating mga land stations, weather stations, sila din yung magre-relay sa ating mga subordinate centers to relay sa ating National Meteorological 
center. The surface synoptic chart reports are plotted by the computer using the station model format. And the forecaster then analyzes the plots in order to construct a surface synoptic chart. So what is a surface synoptic chart? Parang yan dun sa mga diniscuss natin ng mga nakaraang lesson na synoptic chart. So this is same as the surface analysis chart or the surface chart wherein nandoon yung lagay ng panahon na makikita natin dyan yung area of low pressure, anticyclones, nandyan yung ating mga frontal system, frontogenesis, frontolysis, nandyan lahat yan sa ating surface synoptic chart o yung tinatawag nating surface analysis. Ano pa yung makikita natin dyan? Siyempre, pinaka-common is isobars. These isobars are drawn to establish the distribution of atmospheric pressure at mean sea level. And hence, the major pressure systems existing at the synoptic hour. Pag sinabi natin synoptic hour, Synoptic hour, ito yung, ito yung 6 UTC. Pag sinabi natin 6 UTC, magsisimula yan sa 00 UTC. And then next synoptic hour is 0600 UTC. Next synoptic is 1200 UTC. And then followed by 1800 UTC. And then last synoptic hour is 2400 UTC or 00 UTC, parehas lang siya. So, those are the synoptic hour or yung 6 every 6 of the clock. So, dyan tayo nagkakaroon ng tinatawag nating regular weather report in your particular area. And remember, it is on UTC time or universal time coordinated. With the aid of satellite images, fronts are then drawn on the chart. At each stage of the analysis, a comparison is made with the previous synoptic chart to confirm the feasibility of the features established. So, yung makukuha natin from, for example, ay weather facts, o kaya naman ay in Mars at sea, o kaya naman ay from the computer, from the communication computer, galing yan sa satellite. And then, syempre, ikukumpara eh, natin yan doon sa ating present weather condition kung nasaan man tayo. So, we will do a comparison test doon sa ma-receive natin by the satellite and doon sa ating present weather status. Again, by the synoptic hour. So, what you can see is a sample of synoptic chart na produced by uh, yung ating uh, one feed or galing ito sa ating Inmarsat system. So, as you can see here, meron tayo ditong uh, developing frontogenesis. May low pressure area tayo dito. And then, another low pressure area here. Okay. And then, meron tayo ditong frontal system. We can see here some occluded fronts or occlusion. So, makikita natin yan as well as yung ating mga isobars. Okay? So, this is one uh, example of a surface synoptic chart. While the area covered by the frequency of surface analysis will vary from one NMC to another, Charts are generally produced for the major synoptic hours. Okay, so this is UTC on 0, 06, 12, and 1800 for the local regional area. So this is in the British Isles and the Western Europe. Or for a larger area, just like North Atlantic and Western Europe. So circumpolar sur surface synoptic charts giving a broader view of distribution of pressure systems are also constructed. And in addition to the above surface synoptic chart may also be produced 
by intervening synoptic hours. So, ito yung mga nasa kalagitnaan ng synoptic hours. Meron tayo on 03, 09, 100, 1500 hours, and 2100 hours UTC. So, depende yan dun sa area ng inyong observation. So, this is another uh, figure or another field of a surface synoptic chart. So, this is a uh, polar synoptic chart. So, may kita natin. We have here the high pressure area belt. So, parang yung ating uh, pressure distribution system. Kung naalala nyo, after this high pressure belt, it is followed by low pressure belt. And then followed another by high pressure belt. Okay? So, kung makikita nyo, kung natatandaan nyo, this is uh, another type or another feed of ating uh, polar synoptic chart. Another way or another information that we can receive from these uh, meteorological services is the meteorological data collection. Kung mapapansin ninyo, we will, uh, sometimes we can receive these following codes. We have these meteorological codes and these codes are available for decoding sa, sa barko. All of these codes have uh, their corresponding uh, meaning. Okay, and, non, and these uh, codes are available sa ating uh, meteorological code and the code book sa barko meron tayo niyan okay so i will not elaborate it further but ang mahalaga diyan is alam niyo kung ano yung mag-a-appear or ano yung pag nakita niyo itong figures na to malalaman niyo na ay ito yung meteorological codes na pwede nating uh, na pwede nating ma-receive from the uh, geos geostationary satellite There are several methods and channels through which data may be transferred on land manned observing stations. And uh, this is feeds through a communications network by a subordinate center to the NMC. At sea, voluntary observing ships may, trans may transmit their data by coastal radio stations designated to receive weather reports. So, meron tayo diyang Admiralty or A uh, Admiralty List of Radio Signals or ALRS Volume 3 is doon sa mga radio station na pwede nating pagpadalahan ng ating mga weather reports and transmitted by Inmarsat. So meron tayo diyan ngayong uh, Meteorological Observing Systems for Ships or MOSS na papadalahan naman natin by Inmarsat. The current method of data collection from buoys or weather buoys employs satellites and as this established the position of drifting buoys being interrogated. So mamay papakita ko sa inyo yung uh, position ng satellites or pas uh, satellites positioning ng ating geostationary satellites in service. So, in addition to data collection and transmission, satellites are also used as remote sensing units. Kaya meron tayo, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga satellite feeds. And the history of meteorological satellites began with TIROS-1 in 1960. Kung naalala nyo sa ating lecture with the history on meteorology. So, ano ba yung TIROS? This is the first meteorological satellite or television and infrared observation satellite. On board the satellite, visible images which depend upon the reflection of solar radiation by clouds or by the surface of the Earth if there are no clouds were recorded by television camera. Cameras have now generally been replaced by radiometers which sense within the spectral range of solar radiation. So, pati solar radiation na nareceive na rin ni Tiros 1. 
Regiometers also sense infrared radiation, which is emitted by the atmosphere and the surface, the latter depending upon cloud cover. The infrared image shows varying shades of gray, normally termed as grayscale, which relates to the range of temperature of masses emitting the radiation. So, pag mayroon tayong dyang uh, grayscale or gray areas doon sa ating images from Tiros 1, yun yung temperature of the mass emitting the radiation. From 1975 onwards, a series of geostationary meteorological satellites become operational as these satellites sends a location every 30 minutes. Okay, so ganun na siya kabilis mag, uh, magsagap na ng uh, weather information every 30 minutes. And the images obtained are of great value in monitoring the tropical circulation and in particular the development and progress of tropical cyclones okay so meron tayong uh, dedicated area lang ng stationary geostationary satellite so it is between 50 to 55 north and south and the quality of the data for the mid latitude zone is impaired since the latter lie on the periphery pag sinabi nating periphery Kumbaga, parang vision ng mata mo, pag nakatingin ka sa isang uh, lugar or sa isang object, yung sentro ng paningin mo, yun yung malinaw. Pero yung peripherals natin o yung vision sa may gilid ng mata, medyo malabo na yan. So, ganun din yung sa satellite. Meron din yung peripheral vision or peripheral focus. So, these visions and these uh, images is now recorded and updated every 6 hours. So, ito yung sinasabi natin na peripherals. Okay, for example, I have here the Tiros 1. Okay, so yung kanyang uh, focus is nandito. Nandito siya. And then, yung kanyang peripherals hanggang dito so, may kita natin dito sa kanyang area na to, yan yung tinatawag nating peripheral vision limit. So, dyan, hindi na masyadong clear outside this arc, hindi na masyadong clear yung ating weather information. So, dyan na tayo nakakakuha ng mga analysis ng infrared images that is valuable in the information of cloud distribution and type. So, nandyan din yung uh, nakikita, nakikita ng Tiros 1 or ng, ng weather satellite, yung galaw ng ulap, hangin, and uh, of course, yung temperature na due, from, due to the solar radiation. So, this geostationary satellite is revolving around the Earth's surface, is scanning every area, okay, every six hours, you know? So, every six hours siya, okay? So, katulad niya, kung nandito siya, after six hours, i-scan niya naman, gagalaw siya unti-unti, kapunta -unti. naman dito, i-scan naman yung area na yan, paikot hanggang sa pa-scan niya na, Makapag-record na siya, makita na niya yung talagang pinakang uh, weather ng isang area. Kaya doon, kaya pag may, na, may minomantor tayong storm, may kikita natin by satellite, may makita talaga tayong umiikot-ikot dyan, no So, that is thanks to the weather satellite. So, ano ba yung ginagamit nila? They are using microwave radiometers that is fitted in this satellites para makita yung wind conditions and at sea level and the distribution and type of ice on the sea surface. So, yung broadcasting naman ng geostationary satellites are through the WeFax or the weather facsimile. So, 
on the next lesson about this, pag-uusapan naman natin yung tungkol dyan sa weather facsimile. So, this is an example of sa so, masasabi nating uh, view ng ating weather satellite. So, I have here the I have here the uh, Go West 1, an, an example of a geostationary weather satellite. So, kung mapansin nyo, ito siya. And then, nakikita yung uh, lagay ng panahon dito sa galaw ng ulap. So, kung mapansin nyo, there is a developing or developed low pressure area here. So, yan yung view ng satellite. So, kitang-kita yung cloud cover. Kapag naman na uh, itinransfer natin sa isang prog sa isang uh, synoptic chart, yung galaw ng ulap na yun is will be like this. So, it will be like a, in a form of isobars and nandito na yung center of low pressure. So, kung makapansin nyo, yan na yung, ano, yan na yung circulation niya. So, meron na yung circulation as appeared doon sa movement ng clouds kanina. Weather facsimile or the WeFax. So, it is a means of providing weather information to ships at sea. The information is presented as a chart or a map showing barometric high pressures, low pressures, pressure gradient, wind speed and direction and temperature. Schedules for facsimile weather forecasts are provided in maritime publications and could also be sent via facsimile. Since the services that is provided by the facsimile is limited, scheduling of operation is important by consulting the publications and radio broadcasting. Most of the services are offered by 6-hour scheduling of UTC, yung tinatawag nating synoptic hour. The printout will appear as a synoptic chart. So, kung may kita ninyo, this is our weather facsimile. May ganyan pa tayong existing na nagagamit sa barko kahit medyo luma pa siya. And kung may kita nyo, sa kanyang printout, okay, so, it is, uh, it will produce a surface synoptic chart na mayroon yung siyang uh, isobars, nandyan ang center of low pressure area, nandyan yung mga frontal system. So, it will show the present weather condition in the sea area that the ship is trading that could help the seafarer in planning the voyage. So, ang example naman natin dito is a prognostic chart. Okay, so in this prognostic chart or makikita mo yung uh, future na galaw. So in this type of weather chart, this is an improved uh, weather chart. This is uh, from the VVS. And VVS application meron tayo niyan sa parko yun, o yung tinatawag nating uh, Voyager system or a bond voyage rather bond voyage system. Yeah, BVS. So, ito yung ating uh, kumbagay, nagpo-provide ng real-time or ito na nagpo-provide yan ng prognostic information na nakakapag-forecast tayo ng weather at sea. So, kung makikita natin, namumulad dyan yung uh, low pressure area. Okay, so, parang nakikita natin, nasa gitna niyan yung ating low pressure area. So, let me let me make a uh, better marking. Ano? So, kung makikita natin, this is now the center of low pressure area. So, as we can see in this chart, makikita natin dito yung preliminary voyage ng barko. So, as we can see here, so, in this time, nandito yung nandito yung barko malapit sa low pressure area. And this is the track. So, yan yung original track. Ngayon, bilang navigator, ang gagawin natin is ililihis dapat natin yung barko sa bagyo 
or sa storm track. And dapat ang goal natin lagi is to reach the destination safely and efficiently. So, para maging safely yan, kailangan makaisip tayo ng way saan patadaanin ang barko natin na malayo sa low pressure area. So, instead, napipili tayo dyan, why not divert our course? Okay? Dito na tayo padaanin. Ano? So, i-utilize natin from this track, from this track, baguhin natin. So, dito tayo dadaan para malayo tayo sa storm center. Gawa ka ng bagong voyage plan. So, by the time na nandito na yung ating bagyo, nandito ka na. Okay? Nandiyan ka na. Hello? So, another, uh, and another way pa of thinking is, huwag natin kakalimutan yung vice balot law. Okay? So, sa vice balot law, always stay on the navigational semicircle. So, huwag kang pupunta sa dangerous semicircle. So, if we are in the northern hemisphere, okay? so, masasabi ko, this is the northern hemisphere. Okay? And, Dahil nga sa Northern Hemisphere tayo, ang galaw ng bagyo lagi is towards the, to the right of its path. So, makasasabi natin kung siya ay nandito na, ang punta niya ay papunta dito. Okay? So, wag kang pupunta malapit sa bagyo. Layo ka na dito. By the time na nandito siya, ikaw nandito na. By the time na nandito siya, ang bagyo nandito na. Palayo. pataas. So that you will go safely. Ano, makakaalis ka, makakalayo ka sa bagyo. Another example, okay, another example by the use also of our vice ballot law. So, nandito yung ano, nandito yung bagyo natin. And this is the original track. Okay, play safe tayo, play safe. Iiwas ka naman sa malaking alon. So, may, so, so kung nakikita ninyo, this blue shaded part, yan yung malaking alon. Okay? Kung maliit ang barko mo, huwag kang sasabay dyan. So, always maintain on the navigational semicircle, on the northern hemisphere. Okay, paano ko nasabing northern hemisphere siya? Kasi, this is the Mediterranean. Ito yung uh, Gibraltar. This is Atlantic Ocean. This is uh, Norway. Itong part na to, may Denmark. Okay? So, you are in the Northern Hemisphere. This is North Atlantic. So, ang galaw ng bagyo, towards to the line of its path, papunta yan dyan. So, ikaw, papalayo ka na. Huwag ka dito. Dad. Huwag ka dito. Huwag ka dyan. Okay? Divert your course, papunta dito. Okay, so mula dyan, i-divert mo na yung course mapapunta dyan. Okay? So, lusot ka na dyan. Navigation, navigable naman yung waters dito. Kahit medyo makitid yung dadaan na natin pa, parang mas makakatipid ka pa ata sa fuel. Okay? Kasi kung makikita nyo, mas matipid ka sa fuel kasi lumayo, parang malayo pa dito. Samantalang kung dito naman, dadaan ka sa may ilalim. Yung distansya, it will be relatively near kumpara sa nauna mong course. Another view naman, dun tayo sa complete yung view ng ating VVS program. So, in this part, nang, nagkaroon ng Great Circle Track or Great Circle Course yung barko. As you can see in our Great Circle track, makikita natin kung itutuloy niya yung track of a Great Circle track na mas makakatipid siya sa fuel, kung itutuloy niya yung track na to, mas mapapalapit siya dito sa developing raw pressure area. Kung mapansin niyo, there is a shade of blue here dito yung maalon na part. Okay, maalon na part yan. No? So, ang galaw, ng, uh, ang galaw dito ng low pressure area, so it is 
pataas siya, pataas. Okay, so masundan natin yung arrow dyan. Okay, papunta dyan, pataas. So, to avoid high seas or para maiwasan yung malaking alon, kaysa ipilit yung Great Silical Track, why not? Okay, mag line na lang tayo dyan. Okay? Naka, marami kang nga mga konsumo na fuel kasi malhaba-haba yung distansya ng tatakbuhin mo pero makakaiwas ka naman sa bad weather situation. So, we have to think as a navigator paano ka, makaka, paano ka makakaiwas sa bagyo. Think of your safety. Think of the safety of your vessel. Layo ka sa malaking alon. Lumayo ka sa malakas na hangin. Okay? Huwag mo na isipin yung distansya kasi safety first bago yung efficiency, bago yung fuel. So, for your next activity, next activity on the next meeting natin or next lecture meeting natin, you will do like this. Okay? So, you will do this activity na you will do a Storm avoidance. So, as seen in the preliminary voyage plan, the projected path of the vessel and typhoon will meet at day 4. So, kung baga nandito yung barko mo ng day 1, and nandit in on day 4, on day 4, nandito yung bagyo. Okay? So, kung baga nandito, may generating uh, na bagyo dito or frontal system on day 2. Okay? Lalakas siya on day 3 and on day 4, magsasalubong na kayo dyan. So, the projected part, part of the vessel and the typhoon will meet at day 4. Now, what should the voyage plan to avoid the typhoon? So, bibigyan ko kayo ng sample. So, kaysa ipilit natin yung uh, voyage plan or yung Great Silical Track from Manila to West Coast, okay? So, why not i-invert natin yung ating Great Circle pailalim? Pwede yung pailalim para makalayo ka. So, kumbaga nandito yung day 4 mo, nandito yung day 4 mo, nandito rin, nandito ka. So, imagine, kung nandito na yung bagyo ng day 4 at nandito ka ng day 4, masasabi natin, kapag nandito na siya, nandito na yung bagyo ng day 5, ikaw nandito na. Ibig sabihin, you are going safely or you are navigating safely. Pwede rin naman na idiretso mo na yan, magawa ka ng ramp line, idiretso mo siya, okay? Pero, make sure na magbabagal ka muna dito. Reduce your speed here. Kasi kapag dinredirecho mo yan, nandito yung day 4, nandito, nandito yung bagyo, okay? tatamaan ka pa rin. So, dapat magbabagal ka. So, didiskartihan mo siya. Didiskartihan mo kung paano ka or kung ano yung proposed mong plan or voyage plan para maiwasan yung bagyo. Another, for example, nandiyan naman tayo sa ating Southern Hemisphere. You also have a uh, Great Circle Track. Nandito, tayo, nandito yung uh, day 1. Nandito ang barko mo on the day 1. Day 1 here. And then magsasalubong kayo ng bagyo day 4. At nandito naman yung day 4. Okay? So, paano, paano ka makakarating or paano makaka dating safely sa port of destination yung bagyo from Madagascar up to Perth of Australia Perth Australia no so my proposal is like this so i reverse mo na lang i reverse mo lang din yung iyong voyage planning reverse uh, great circle so pwede rin naman na i line mo siya straight pwede rin Pero make sure na magbabagal ka dito on your day 1 and day 2. Okay, kasi on your day 4, nandito pa rin siya. Oh. Nandito pa rin siya. 
Samantalang in day 4 mo, kung iaalay natin, nandito ka on day 4, malayo na yung bagyo. So, nandito ka, nandito siya. On day 5, nasaan na yung bagyo niyan? Okay? Yung day 5, kung nandito ka, yung bagyo nandito na. Ibig sabihin, doon ka lumalayo na yung bagyo sa'yo. So, anong idea dyan? Ang idea dyan is the usage of vice balot law. You have to stay on the navigational semicircle of the storm. So, nag-reverse sa uh, great circle tayo, pwede rin naman tayong mag blind. Pero, to note, to keep in mind, na ang kailangan natin is ilayo ang barko sa malaking alon, malakas na hangin, and syempre, doon sa ating storm. So, that's all for our lecture on weather services for shipping with storm avoidance. This is your instructor in this lecture, in this topic, Sir Melvin. Thank you.